Welcome friends, and this one's find the limit as x approaches positive infinity to the square root of x squared plus x minus x. One observation, if you replace directly x with infinity, you would have ultimately infinity squared plus infinity and the square root of infinity. So in other words, you would still end up with infinity. And the same thing with the x, that would also be infinity. And based on this, you might conclude that the following is true. Is it equal to zero? So let's go through the process of actually working this out. What you need to do is take this expression here and then with the minus x, and you need to multiply by its conjugate. So you can pretend for a second that it's over 1 as if it were a fraction. And the conjugate is just the conjugate of the numerator, so it's this. The only difference is you make this into a plus, and then you take this here, and you're going to make that also in the bottom the same thing. So that really is a form of the number 1. That's why it's that allowed. Let me push this down a little bit because you need to see something here. Now this is of the following form. This is of the form a minus b, and then this one right here is of the form a plus b, where a is the root of x squared plus x, and b is x. And then perhaps you remember that when you multiply this, you get a squared minus b squared. So it's a difference of squares pattern. Applying that, I'm going to have the following. The first part will be that uh, x squared plus x quantity squared minus x squared, because that plays the role of b. And on the bottom, you still have the same expression this way. Then you simplify this, so perhaps you can see that the square root here and the 2 will clearly cancel off. Which means that the next stage over here, I'm going to get the following then. x squared and then plus x minus the x squared, and the whole thing still divided by that same expression, x squared plus x, and then plus the x this way. Now here in the top, you can tell that this positive x squared will cancel off with this negative x squared right here, which means at the end here we're going to have x divided by the square root of x squared plus x plus x. We have to somehow get rid of the x in the numerator, so a way to do that is as follows. You can continue by saying x, and then under the square root symbol, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root, I'm going to write this as x squared, plus x, and then times x squared divided by x squared this way. That's allowed because x squared divided by x squared is just 1 right here. But why does that help us? Because now there's an x squared in this position, and this is an x squared in this position. And then you have that x all the way on the outside, this way. And then below you can factor that red x squared out, so it's going to be x, and then here it's going to be the square root, and it's going to be x squared. Within parentheses you will have 1 plus and then x divided by x squared this way for now. And then plus an x at the end, continue. Notice something here. Here is x squared times the quantity within the parentheses. You can distribute the square root to each piece individually. So it's going to be the following then. You're going to have x, and then here you're going to have square root of just x squared. And then here you're going to have x squared 1 plus. And here you have x divided by x squared. You simplify that so it just becomes 1 over x this way, and then plus the x on the outside. Continue. So again here, you're going to recognize that this square root and the 2 in that position will cancel off. That's going to leave you there for the following. x times x and the square root here of that whole expression, 1 plus 1 over x, and then here plus x. What you got to do now is you got to factor the x out. So this is really at the end here, x times 1. So in other words, this underlined x together with this other underlined x, those have to be factored out. So you're going to end up with x times 1 in the top, and in the bottom you're going to have that x factored out. Within parentheses, then you will have that the square root of 1 plus 1 over x, and in the other position, you would have plus 1 this way. Next, you're going to take this, and you're going to divide by this x right here. And then that's going to leave you here in the numerator 1, and in the denominator, you will have the square root of 1 plus 1 divided by x, and then here, plus 1 this way. Now you can take the limit of this new expression directly, so it's going to be uh, the limit as x approaches here infinity, and you're going to use this expression this way. Take a look. And what you can do, essentially, is pretend that you are plugging in infinity for x. Pretend, but it kind of works out anyway, so it's going to be the following. 1 over and the square root of 1 plus 1 divided by infinity, as if you were doing this, and then plus 1 over here. Now, very likely, you know that this part right here, this will go to 0, so let me strike it away. This part, because it's 1 over infinity, which means all that is left over in this position is 1 over the square root of 1 plus 0, and then here, plus 1. So work this out, it's going to be 1 over the square root of 1 plus 1, which is then <laughs> 1 over 1 plus 1, which is of course then 1 over 2. This is clearly not equal to 0, the way you may have concluded by looking initially at infinity minus infinity. Sometimes our intuition, in other words, is not mathematically confirmed. Thank you friends, please leave a like and subscribe, I'll see you in another video.